Welcome to part four of our night out with Michael Scott of Lantern Recovery. That was tonight's first job. That was a serious bit of rescue, wasn't it, really? It was a serious one, but it was the worst one I've ever been to for a winch out. Tell me why. It's just as soon as you put your foot in it, it, it sank. And unfortunately, many drivers, even though they know it's been raining, they think, oh, I can take a chance turning around in there. They see the soggy, but they think they can skip over the soggy bit yeah. to get to the sort of dry part of the field turn around but um, I've, you know, it's just typical I wash my truck I've got, I've got a new boot I've got clean overalls on and the first job is a wind chow <laughs> and it was really slimy sticky stuff most of it's in my hair at the moment the only thing with wind chats compared to traditional lift and tow is with wind chats you've really really got to think about what you're doing um, it's not just a case of whack a winch line on it and see what happens Got to, you've got to physically stand there for five, maybe ten minutes. Stand there as long as you need to. Figure out where you're going to put a chain or where you're going to put a strop, how you're going to rig it, where is it going to go, how is it going to come out. And as you saw there, sometimes, as silly as it sounds, you've got to drag it into the get it into the field yeah. to get it away from an obstacle, to then drag it out, drag it sideways as we did to get it out of the field. Bab still comes first though. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just going to head off and pick up a tipper now. It's overheated. Hopefully it's empty. Pick it up from the rear. Because uh, tippers are a pain in the back so I don't take props off or take two half shards out to stop the gearbox winding up. Right. We can get out of this junction. We're head towards Enfield. Slip down the back roads. And that email will tell me whether it's empty or loaded or not. It will? Yeah. Because when they call the jobs through, they have to tell us make, model, they also have to tell us whether it's loaded so we can charge accordingly. Because obviously, right. me dragging an empty tipper, which yeah. probably only weighs about 15 tonne, yeah. obviously isn't going to use as much as it was what a fully freighted 32 tonne of mine. So, this is our second job of the night. And this is going to be, well, this is a recovery, isn't it, really? At least you don't have to get down in the mud again, do you? No. There he is. The fitter's car is soon gone and Michael's ready to hitch up, but they'll have to lift the front of this tipper because the vehicle is fully laden and needs both back axles to carry the load. Yeah. I only like to lift it to the second axle just off the ground so when we put the chains on because I do chains different to what another recovery driver might do them. so when I put them on and I lower it down all the chains go nice and tight
Because the truck will be towed with the back wheels down, Michael will remove the prop shaft. This prevents potential damage to the engine and gearbox, but in this instance it gives him another tough job under the truck. trucks now they, they've got so little room to put air pipes and tanks and everything it's easy to take props off now instead of strap them up if i had strapped it up you could have and that's tonight's job number two nearly complete but he still has to get it back to its home base so he'll do that and more in part five see you soon